888-900-9570 is the phone number here. I want to get to Shanahan for a second. Kyle Shanahan, I'm Brendan Ayuk. You know, because a lot of talk is, is Brendan Ayuk going to be ready to roll? It's going to be ready to roll Monday night. Well, here is Kyle Shanahan on Brendan Ayuk. And they resolve themselves perfect, like just back to normal. Um, so you know, you know, things get tough, you know, especially when it can go a number of directions. You know, that's what I was saying to you guys from the beginning. Um, it could have gone a number of directions. There was times they possibly could be traded. There was times he could possibly be here. Uh, that was hard about the whole negotiation thing, and that is what made it different than usual. We never gone through it being so close both ways, and for it to end up working out here, that you know, in the beginning, we wanted him here. BA wanted to be here, and we all wanted to make that work out. And really, in the end, that was still the case. And you got to go through that and make sure you're talking to people as humans. And both sides need to understand when you're talking that way, you're not negotiating. Um, you're trying to tell each other how you truly feel. And when that is the same way as it was six months before that, uh, those things are easy to get over. You just got to make sure that's truly how you feel. And you could feel that leading into it in the last few days. Um, I think that's what made it easier to close it and get it done those last couple of days. And that's been awesome ever since, like nothing ever happened. Yeah, so the relationship has been repaired. Real quick, Shasky, are, are you playing 98% of the snaps? Yeah, I mean, I'd be surprised with that, but my expectations are that I'd be surprised with 98%. I'll see as the week goes. We've had one practice with him. He threw with Brock over the weekend. Um, we got one practice with Trent. Um, today will be their second. See how they are these three days and then kind of evaluate it. Yeah, it's it's uh, like I it's one game last night. We'll see. I'm really fired up for this Eagles Green Bay Packer game because this is this is the two teams in, in the NFC that I see as threats to the Niners. But you can't have enough weapons. And that's why the IU thing is so important. You just you you cannot have enough weapons against any of these elite teams. You're talking about Baltimore, and, and look, they're going to be a really good team this year. They're going to win a lot of games, right? They're a lot of games. They're in a really good division. You need weapons against a team like that, right? And that's why I'm, I'm rethinking my bold, and this is a bold take, but like Buffalo, like, boy, they lost a lot of weapons. So do they have the weaponry to be able to put up in a B game, like not having your A game, in a B game, a C game, do you have enough weapons to continue to turn out points against Baltimore's defense, against Kansas City's defense? You need to be able to keep pace. And I look at the IUK, uh, the whole thing, it was like, wow, like the Niners, there no way are they a better team without IUK. But guys are going to go down. They're going to miss plays. You're going to get bottled up a little. You got to have that third receiver in Jennings, that fourth playmaker in in Cowing or eventually, hopefully, Ricky Pearsall. You better have that backup tight end. That's a question. Like You're, you're talking about Isaiah you Likely. Something? I'm seeing Andrews and Isaiah Likely. I'm like, God, I'd love to have a second tight end who can make plays. That's where a Cowings as a fourth receiver, third receiver, makes a lot of impact. Can I, can I ask Do you, you have something? that second running back in Jordan Mason? You can't have enough weapons. Can I ask you something? Why? Because I, I subscribe to that. I agree. You can't have enough playmakers. Why do you think Niner fans, or some Niner fans, thought that they would skip a beat without Ayuk? Because the dialogue was completely different when well, he was going through the negotiation. They themselves into it. Or, is that what they, it was? Because yeah, I thought it was talking themselves into it. No, 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 it. because this guy was a second-team All-Pro, and, you know, I hear, well, you know, 1,000 yards in today's day, days, blah, 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 and this guy and this guy. Why do you think Niner fans, you think they were talking themselves into Chris Conley and Jawan Jennings? Yeah. That they could just replace him and score 30 points a game? I mean, and Ike was replaceable? Yeah, I mean, I, I find I, it, I, I'm smiling ear to ear now that I see a lot of, I know, I trust me, I remember everything like an elephant. My memory is insane. It, I'm glad that people realize how good IU is and that you need Brendan IU. It's basically my point. Yeah. I'm glad that people's come around saying, yeah. damn, yeah, we need number 11. Well, I mean, like, again, like, you watched that game last night. Did the Chiefs, did the Chiefs lack firepower? No, they're getting Hollywood Brown back, too. <laughs> they're adding to what they they're have. They're getting Hollywood Brown back, yeah, they're too. They're adding to it, right? And so, like, Baltimore, I watched that game. I was like, man, like, and to your point, I guess you tweeted it out. They really could use another receiver. Yeah, like, it always bad. feels like they're always a receiver short. You know? And, which, and which, so, which is kind of wild to me now that I think about it. If Brandon Ayuk was really wanting to get traded, I wonder why he didn't, yo, Lamar. Maybe I go to well, Baltimore. I don't know their money situation. Yeah, I, so I, I, mean, I, I don't. I don't they know let their situation. Queen go. But, you know, I, I, we thought we knew that Iyer situation and their money situation and their restructuring and signing deals and giving dudes new money all the time. So 
who the hell knows what the salary cap, but I, I haven't checked out Baltimore's cap, but I did think about it yesterday. It was like, it's a good point. Boy, I would have fit perfectly in that offense. I wonder why Baltimore wasn't knocking on the door. Well, I, I just think that uh, the way the NFL is right now, it's like situational stops. So you got to have certain pass rushers. It's nice to have a good secondary because you want to be able to make plays. Can you, can you create turnovers and get situational stops on defense? It's not about overall yards. You're not holding anybody to a hundred yards anymore. That Those days are long gone. And then on offense, do you just have unbelievable weaponry across yeah. the board? You got to have it. And I look at the Niners, it's like, okay, CMC, I know he's got the calf injury, and that is, it's not good, right? But you got Debo backing up. You got Jordan Mason. You got Ayuk, Kittle. They've got weaponry. Yeah, they got they got a lot. They have a lot. We'll see against the New York Jets. Jets defense is really good. It is. We'll get down into the numbers here. They quarterbacks do not play well against the New York Jets. They shut down the pass. Uh, we'll break that down Great in front. detail. Good front. Um, Dominic Pooney's going to have his work cut out for him with Quinnen Williams. You talk about Chris Jones targeting the weak link on the offensive line. What do you think Chris uh, Quinnen Williams is going to do Monday night? Quinnen Williams is an absolute stud. There's, I remember, I remember at one point during the draft process, a lot of people prefer Quinnen Williams over Nick Bosa. Now, it's worked out for both teams. They've both become all pros. They've both got their money. And I get it. The Niners have drafted so many D tackles. But Quentin Williams is a monster. He is coming into his own. He can wreck the entire game by himself. And Jermaine Johnson coming off the edge. Will McDonald. I was listening to Anthony Beck yesterday with uh, Steiny and Guru. He was breaking down Will McDonald. Hey, look, we know Hassan Reddick's not around. Yeah, yeah. But Will McDonald is a guy you got to keep your eyes on. He's going to be a great pass rush threat against Colt McKivitt. So, it's not going to be easy on Monday, but we cannot overreact. What I don't want to do is over. The Niners win like 17 13. Oh my God, we can't beat the Chiefs play. Like, no, it's a long way to go. It's a long way to go. People know that. The first games of the season, first month of the season, it's a long way to go, folks. Don't well, overreact. Like, okay, it's like Baltimore. Like, I, and that's my bigger, you know, opinion. It's like last year, you know, they had home field advantage and. And the Chiefs were more vulnerable, in my opinion, than what they are now. And it's like, God, they just they needed to win that for their psyche. They're still going to win 12 or 13 games. Like, they have a bad year. They win 11. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're a high-level team. That's a really tough division, right? We've learned now having home field for the Chiefs, eh, doesn't really matter. Like, they can kind of do it anywhere. They're like the only team in the league, right? You just throw them to the side. Everyone else is like, you got to stack wins to try to get that number one seed to get time off. You, you desperately do 17-game schedule, the attrition. You need that time off. Absolutely. And I, I just look at the Niners like a game against the Jets. Got to have it because it's week one and all those things. But it is outside of the AFC. So to your point. Outside of the NFC. Excuse me, yeah. outside of the NFC, it's the AFC. So to your point, like it's not the end all be all. But I'd like to see them play well. And it would wipe away a lot of the negative narratives from the offseason. Let's get the shameless shout outs here on the row. Shameless shout outs. Let's roll. 